Hello, I want to take you today on a little journey back, a little journey back, a couple of months back. Think back to January 2020, where you were at that time. It was a couple of days after New Year's. Maybe you were at the gym, living these New Year's resolutions, or maybe you were just canceling already that again, these, these New Year's resolutions. But think back again where you were in January 2020. You might think a couple of weeks later, this one hit. So if we think back here, I want to ask three questions to you. Why three questions? Because I do believe we can learn a lot from the answers towards these questions on how to navigate the unknown, also maybe in the future. Here are the three questions. Question number one. Think about what has been your forecast accuracy from January 2020, about what 2020 will look like. If you were to put a percentage behind this, what would that be? Question one. Question number two. Who has been the best leader you have experienced over the past 20 months? Think about that. The best leader you've experienced in the past 20 months. And question number three. What would you advise now if you were to travel back in time, your January 2020 self? Things like buy Zoom shares or something like this, stock account toilet paper, the usual stuff. <laughs> or maybe something else as well on top. Think about these three questions, and I will come back to these three questions because I think in the answers towards them lie some of the things that maybe we can all take in order to navigate the unknown. And that's what I want to explore here today with you. Three principles for navigating this unknown. Let's start with the first one. What is the first principle to think broad and beyond? And this goes back to the question of what has been your forecast accuracy from January 2020? Can I see? Anybody say 100%? Yeah, in Gen 2020, I saw that coming. Everything here, I have it nailed it down. Nobody there? Otherwise, we need to talk in the break, basically, <laughs> if, if there were somebody. But the first check, I mean, nobody here in the room, but the first check that I would always do with these individuals would be what I would call the broken clock check. You know what the broken clock check is? Every broken clock is also right twice per day. <laughs> Basically, every broken clock is right twice per day, and there have been people like, I've been saying this for 40 years, and then it came like, well, but that is not really what we need to understand in order to think broad and beyond. But what, what else have been maybe your forecast accuracy? Anybody would say 50% I got this round, round about right for so? 10? 1, maybe? 1%? <laughs> okay, 1 percentage. Okay, yeah, there, there the first hands are coming up. It was for all of us a bit new, but there were some individuals who actually were prepared and could foresee that. And I was trying to see what did they actually do? What did they do differently? For that, we have to explore some areas which I would call the knowns and unknowns. And as the philosopher Donald Rumsfeld once said, <laughs> we have to explore these unknowns and knowns. Let me elaborate. There are sometimes in life known knowns. You know that you're here, you know your name, these are known knowns. Sometimes, you know that you have known unknowns. Well, maybe you want to start a new job, digital transformation, you need to brush up on your skills. You know, like, mm, I, don't, I, uh, I don't know this, what's going on there, so I need to learn it. Known unknowns. Sometimes there are unknown knowns, things that we know but that we're not really aware of. And a lot of us have found out these during the COVID times. You know, when a lot of us had to work from home all of the time and we had to navigate things and 100% virtual, hey, that seems to be working. Managing kids and everything at home. I still remember how with one client, all of a sudden we were having a Zoom call and in there was working his son with a Nerf gun, came into the room, <laughs> shoot three times, took a cookie, walked out again and we just continued to talk because, yeah, of course, it's normal, right? I mean, that's what we all got used to, no, unknown knowns. But there is also what is called unknown unknowns. I call that the quadrant four. Things that we're not even aware of that are happening. The unknown unknowns. And when they come in these quadrant, this very often hits us as a complete surprise, leading to that little forecast accuracy for many of us. So how can we develop that sector a bit more? That what I would call quadrant four thinking to explore these unknown unknowns. How can we do that? 
a couple of things that I would have wanted to recommend to you. First, think about the shape of your thinking. Have you ever thought about the shape of your thinking? What it looks like? What would be shape of the thinking like? If you look at some extremes, what for some people like sometimes look like the shape of thinking would look like that, basically. Uh, I know a bit of everything and I think a bit of everything like this and so on. And we all know like this, okay, a bit of YouTube here, a bit of there and so on, and that's it. Some other extreme would be the shape of thinking would look like that. It's like, I'm the expert in that one field, nothing else. I sit in my ivory tower, so to speak. That would be the other extreme. We all know, basically, these two extremes probably don't work that well. So one basic advice already is to know something about everything and everything about something. That leads to T-shaped thinking. And that's already pretty good advice. But does it help us already to navigate the unknown unknowns? I think in order to do that, we need to go a bit beyond. We have to look at our toolbox, our thinking toolbox. Have you ever thought about what is in your thinking toolbox? Which tools are in there? And maybe if we need to add some new, dust off or maybe some that we haven't used in a while and maybe throw out some. I think it's from time to time a good exercise. And maybe now is a good exercise to do this. Some of my favorite very simple tools is, for example, to be a coach to your mind. You know, a problem comes, so to speak, or something is hitting, hitting your inbox, oh, there's a problem, and so on. The first question that we always ask ourselves, hey, what could I do? What could I do? Ah, I have this idea. I sent this back, this fire off email, and something like this. But instead there, do something, and ask maybe a question. In lean manufacturing, we ask the question of what is called five times why. Very powerful question. Why did something happen? Why, why, why? Pushing yourself to go deep in that. But maybe you can also do something different. Ask yourself five times what else. What else could I do? What else? Uh, well, instead of finding this email, I could give a phone call. Okay, what else? What else? And it's very powerful when you do that. Typically, when I do that with individuals, very often, like, first thing, second what else comes to mind. But then the third one, well, let's stop it now. But that is really the powerful moment. That is the moment where we go into the unknown fields, where we elaborate this. And that is a very powerful tool. What else can be in our toolbox? What else should be in the toolbox? Well, instead of what else, it could be the question of, what if? And maybe we need to dust off an old technique that is very, very powerful, which is scenario thinking. You know, when I was exploring this, who navigated this crisis quite well, I came across the energy sector, and some of the leaders in the energy sector, and actually they could give themselves quite a higher number of forecast elements, forecast accuracy of what they got right. Because there, an analysis of what is called high impact, low probability events is quite usually done, quite often done. High impact, low probability. What could be the high impact but low probability events that could be coming to the industry? And maybe you can think about for this for yourself as well. What could be the high impact but low probability events that might be out there on the horizon? Thinking about this, reflecting about what could I do in that case really goes you and brings you into these unknown, unknown fields. And then maybe complement this with one of the most powerful questions, I think, that should be in our thinking toolbox. And that is the question, what if I'm wrong? If I build up my thoughts and my thinking and all of my areas, what if I'm wrong? And that can be very, for very big theories, that can be a good question, but also on the very small side. Just last week, I had this element. I was receiving an, uh, normally a delivery from one of the big delivery companies, and they were sending me emails saying, like, uh, you know, Lars, we tried to call you. And it was like, no, no, I was here. Nobody tried to call you. We, we, we were at your home. No, you weren't. And it was already starting off to send like angry letters like, oh, you did not show up. And then I asked myself again, but what if I'm wrong here? And I start to dig in and I start to realize that the address was wrong because of my fault. Sometimes asking this as a simple thing to can help you go into unknown areas. And then maybe if you do that, if you apply some of these tools to go into this quadrant four, maybe the shape of your thinking changes into something like this. It goes into new fields, into new directions and new areas. And that is, I think, a very, very powerful tool. Then we come to the second part, the second question, and also the second principle for navigating the unknown, and that is to provide clarity. That goes back to who has been the best leader that you have experienced over the past 20 years. And whenever I ask this, various answers come back, like the people who cared, people who were very empathetic, and so on. Very rarely what comes back is where people say, like, wow, you know, that individual, the way he or she yelled at us every morning, ah, that was great. 
How we were put down in front of everybody. Oh, that was great. I love that. I learned so much by, by being that, having that aggressive person there. Very rarely that is being mentioned. Also, what is rarely mentioned is like, wow, that individual, how he or she was running around like a headless chicken and saying like, what should we do? What should we do? Oh, that was great. The confusion that it created. Mm, the vibrant energy. Oh, that was fantastic. I love that. Very rarely does that come to mind. But I think here lies some of the key factors on navigating the unknown. Based on that deep thinking, thinking broad and beyond, providing clarity and moving forward. But how do we do that? Well, a lot of you work in organizations and corporates and other things, and the key thing that people fall into is we're like, great, let's provide clarity. Now let's do something here. As the great Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So we need to determine where we're going, and we create a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> and we have it all figured out because we have 100 pages of PowerPoint there. And as you can clearly see on slide 78, that is what we're going. And very often, like then, the direction and the answer and the reaction is <laughs> something along these lines. Like, OK, I don't know what, what I'm doing. But what do we do then? Like, do, don't we do anything? Basically, don't provide any clarity. Just say, OK, we're navigating here on site, but just go ahead. Just don't do anything. Well, maybe we can do something different. And one of the teams I was working with actually said, no, you know, we don't want to do these, these massive PowerPoints, but we want to put a stick in the ground, so to speak. And we give ourselves a challenge. We answer a formula. At the beginning, when we really don't know where we're going every day, then maybe once per week, then maybe once per month. The formula that they gave themselves was saying, like, oh, look, we just look at six simple questions and fill this out and do this for us very fast, very rapid. What were those that they did? And they said, like, what is our vision of direction in a tweet in 140 characters or less? With the one key goals, basically, what is it that we want to achieve? We're focusing on this field, on this customer this week and on this market next week. And we are not doing this. We are aligning on what we are not doing. We will do this to achieve this. We'll do this activity specifically. And then probably the most important question, the key action that we will do tomorrow to align this is this. Six simple questions that they did, asking this if time and again, one, one day, aligning on this. And by doing this, I think you achieve something, in, especially if you work with an organization, but also for yourself, something that I sometimes would call owl eyes. You know what the power of owl eyes are? They can see in the dark and in the night. And sometimes this providing this type of clarity can be something enormously powerful. And then we go further to the third area. And the third principle is the fire principle. And that goes back to that question, what would you advise your January 2020 self? I know what I would advise myself. I would advise myself the fire principle. I learned the FIRE principle, maybe you can say the hard way, some very, well, quite some years ago. I was leading a logistics finance department, and I received one morning the call from the office of the supply chain director for Europe. And the administrative assistant said, Lars, you need to drop everything, you need to cancel everything this morning, you need to come to the director's office. Great, I thought. That's a good start to the morning, fantastic. <laughs> Walked over, entered the door thinking of what's going to happen here. And I entered the director's office. Was, was a great guy, very wise individual. And he said, Lars, you're probably wondering why you're here. I said, yes, indeed. It's because of the fire principle. It was that great? At that moment, I didn't really know what it was, but I was thinking, like, has it something to do with your fire at the moment, which was going through my, <laughs> through my head, which was not really what I wanted to do. But he started to elaborate, Lars. Why is that the fire principle? Because I received a message this morning from headquarters where all the different regions are being represented. And somehow, for whatever reason, our region here, what we, you and I are responsible for, I don't know why, but has completely wrong data. And we have two choices now, you and I. We could just let it happen and let it go and do nothing, and react, and see what happens, and play catch up then a couple of weeks, and so on, and we'll be asked always like to explain, and then we have a message track, and we explain. Or we could apply the fire principle. We could extinguish the fire while it's still small. We can drop everything. That's why I've asked you to drop everything. I have uh, dropped everything. We roll up our sleeves, and for three hours, we correct this now. And by the time horizon, 
Basically, when, when the US wakes up, we have this corrected and it's gone. But we need to act fast. We need to act now while the fire is still very small because now we have the room to act. And for me, that was one of the most powerful advices that I've ever seen. And if I were to travel back to January 2020, that would be the advice that I would give myself. So there we go. Three principles of navigating the unknown. What have we explored? We've explored think broad and beyond with what I call quadrant four thinking. How can you always go into the unknown unknowns and push yourself to go into the unknown unknowns? Provide clarity with the, what I would call the owl eyes formula to really see like how can we three, especially as an organization, but also for yourself through the night, so to speak, and then act fast with the fire principle. Thinking alone and not doing anything doesn't help. Just shouting out some strategies without like deep thinking and action doesn't help. Acting fast without direction doesn't help. But in between here is the secret to success in navigating the unknown. And I think all of us have at the moment a chance. You know, there is an effect that I would call the vapor trail effect. Sometimes we reflect on events like they happened, like they happened over the past 20 months. Sometimes we listen to some thoughts, some ideas, some advice, and we come out of this one, and then the vapor trail is very sharp, like what we can see here with this airplane at the beginning. But then happens something. Then life kicks in. Monday morning, the flow of messages and meetings, and everything like this vapor trail here goes a bit away, and we lose the focus. So here's the thing again, you advise yourself, think about what would you advise your January 2020 self? You've asked, you've explored this, maybe you want to exchange on it as well later on. But the one thing is, maybe when Monday morning hit, try to implement that one thing. Because that building the skills and navigating the unknown, I think that is also the key to success in navigating also maybe potential future unknowns that might be on our way. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs>